Hello. G'day. It's so wonderful to be with you. We serve a God who speaks. And today we're going to be leaning in and talking about how God talks all the time in many ways, but he's speaking a word to all of us right now today. Come on, get ready to hear his voice today. The Bible's very clear. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Get ready to hear him afresh today. Come on, pour, pour it out. out. Hey, welcome to Pour It Out with Ben and Jody Hughes. We're so excited to be with you today. In case you're trying to figure it out, I'm the Ben part. This is <laughs> this is Jody right here. Hi. You know, this is one of our favorite. I know I say that all the time, but truly, this is one of our favorite things to talk about. Today, we're talking about the fact that God speaks. You know, we've been in ministry many years. We've been pastors for well over 10 years, as well as missionaries and things like that. But as part of our pastoral ministry, one of the most common questions, one of the most common requests we get is, how can I hear the voice of God? And so we want to talk all about that today. And that's why we even titled this right at the beginning, God Speaks, because that's what we need to know. When we start, you know, can I even hear his voice? Well, when we know that, yes, God speaks, we know that he's speaking and we just need to be listening to him. And so, well, I just want to share a quick couple of stories with you, um, different times where I've heard the Lord speak really clearly, clearly in different ways. And then we're just going to just give a little bit of teaching and, and uh, but just we're going to keep it really simple today. But I even pray right now, I want you to know right now that you can hear his voice. And I believe that while the show is playing, while you are listening, before we get done today, you're going to hear him speak in a fresh way to you. And if yeah. nothing else, he wants you to know he loves you so much. Are you listening to me? He loves you so much. He loves you. Come on. And so right at the beginning in the introduction there, um, I shared, I guess it's probably one of the most best known verses from the Bible about hearing the voice of God. And it's just simply this, in John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So anything that says to you that you can't hear God is a lie. Yeah. The enemy wants you Come to on. think you can't hear him and it's a lie. You know the voice of God and in fact, you are hearing him speak all the time. And so anything that's in your ears, we just command ears to be unstopped, our spiritual yeah. ears even to be unblocked. We take authority over every lie and we cancel it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you know, one of the um, one of the times where I remember hearing God so clearly. Now, now God speaks in different ways. There's a booming voice, there's a quiet voice, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But this was one of those times where it was a still small voice, but it was very clear. I remember I was at a uh, like a like a fair, a, a fate, you know, a, a carnival, if you like, um, with our daughter Keely, and um, she. I can't remember exactly how old she was. She might have been 10 years old or so, maybe a little bit younger. But I remember I, I had a phone call while we were in line and she was on a ride and I got distracted. I was on the phone and um, and like like a great father, you know, and, uh, and I realized when the phone call had finished, the ride had ended and Keely was was no longer on the ride. And of course, there was lots of people there. And I remember I just prayed straight away. I said, God, where is Keely? Where is Keely? And immediately on the inside of me, God spoke and he said, she's on the swings. And so I turned and I went over there, just, just over to the left a little bit was one of those rides with the, the chains and the swings going around like this. And so immediately I went over there and I got there and sure enough, here's Keely mm -hmm. <laughs> going around the, on these swings. She's gotten on this ride and, and was just having a great time. She didn't know that meanwhile I'm over here in full blown parental intercession and emergency <laughs> and emergency tongues and the voice of the Lord had come. But, but doesn't that just speak the heart, of, the heart of God? He knew exactly where Keely was. He knows where you are. Yeah. He knows what's going on in your life right now and he's speaking to your heart. So this was one of those times, you know, I, I could have been afraid. I could have all sorts of things that had, had might have happened. But, you know, but God just spoke. And this is how he speaks. He said, this was one of those times on the inside of me. So this wasn't an external voice. It was a still quiet voice, but it was sure. Keely is on the swings. Wow. Huh. Amazing. 
Wow, God, and, and God's just stirring that. I can feel it even now, actually. God's just stirring that inner uh, just hunger to hear his voice, to be a friend with God. You know, I want to say this to you. Hearing the voice of God, the first key is being a friend of God. Like any friend, they have conversations. When you sit down with a friend, you talk. One speaks, the other listens. One listens, the other speaks. And so I speak over you right now that growing in the ability to hear the voice of God is all about growing our friendship with Father God, that it's all a conversation, a conversation with a friend and a conversation with a good friend is never hard. It's easy. You want to keep the conversation going. Amen. And even like normal conversations with good friends, I think sometimes, you know, when you're with a good friend, it's comfortable. And when there's a silence, when there's a pause, you're comfortable with a good friend, right? Some of you are worried that God's not talking to you because there's been a pause in the conversation. And I want to simply say that it's just a pause in the conversation. And when you're a good friend, that doesn't matter. It's just a pause. We're still comfortable in each other's company. Don't worry. The conversation's still going. Start it up again. Of course, another one of the ways that God speaks so powerfully, of course, is the Word of God. Now, I know sometimes we can say that and we think, oh, okay, well, that just means that he doesn't really talk. I've just got to read about him and read what he's saying on a page. That is not what I am saying at all. The Bible is not just a normal book. It's not just picking up any other book. The Bible In the Bible itself, it says that the Word of God is living and active. It's not like every other book. The Word of God is actually living and active. And I remember such a great example of this. This was one of those kind of rebukes from the Lord. I guess it was a bit of a fun rebuke. But, you know, we at the time, we were uh, were on staff at a church and we were were pastors and we were just feeling like we maybe we needed to have a bit of a change. We were feeling a little bit burnt out. And and so we actually were on vacation. And uh, I remember (laughs) we're sitting around, we were at this beautiful beach place, you know, and, and we had this conversation with each other. And I I literally said, I said, maybe, you know, we should move to this city here. And just like for a year or so, I actually said for a year or so, we'll just like buy a business, like let's buy a subway or something like that. And and we'll just do that, you know? And then I went for a walk later that day and I'm walking down the beach. I'm having a bit of a prayer walk and I'm, I'm reading my Bible. Right. And I'm just reading through and I'm reading James. And I kid you not, this is what I read. It's James 4.13. It says this. Now, listen, you who say today or tomorrow will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. I was like... (laughs) I oh know. my gosh. You like, think God hears your thoughts, right? It's like, what are you trying to say, God? I'm, it's not very It's not very clear. No, I mean, how amazing is that, that the Lord would speak so clearly to us yeah. through the word of God. Now, of course, this is, he's not writing here in James about, okay, you know, Ben and Jody, don't go and buy that subway. Don't move to that city. But of course, this is how the word yeah. is alive to us. God uses his word to speak to us right when we need it. Yeah. And God obviously speaks through his word. So one of the keys to hearing the voice of God is to read the word of God, read the Bible and allow it because it's active and alive to speak to your spirit. Words will suddenly leap off the page and become real to you. Other ways he speaks is through his still small inner voice an inner knowing an inner sense an inner whisper to your heart of what the Lord is saying to you uh, through, uh, you know, he can speak through a booming voice. You know, I've heard the Lord say to me as a young child, two loud, uh, two words very loudly in my bedroom once, ask me from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, 3, ask me. God can speak through nature. He can speak through other conversations, through, through uh, you know, sermons, through church, through things like this, where Fa- Father God is speaking through online media to people. God can speak through, uh, through dreams, through visions, through, uh, what's some other ways, Ben? Through unusual, repetitive, uh, just things happening over and over and something on your inside starts to go, this is not just a coincidence. This is a God incidence. God's speaking to me right now. Yeah, and we're going to talk about those things a little bit more shortly, maybe even in the next segment. You know, sometimes I know it's easy for us. We hear preachers talking and they say, well, God said this, God said that, and I was doing this and God spoke. And we can think that what they mean is that God spoke audibly like a booming voice every single time. And I want to tell you, that's very, very rare. 
Yes, it definitely happens. Uh, I think it's only once probably that I've heard God actually speak audibly to me. And uh, I was on the train one morning. I used to, I went to Hillsong Bible College um, many years ago now. Uh, and, uh, and I was, I used to have to get up and catch the train at 5 a.m. And I remember I, my head was against the window of the train. It was a two hour ride each way. And my head was just against the window. And I was just kind of uh, just snoozing one morning. And all of a sudden I wasn't praying. I wasn't thinking about God. I was just, just snoozing. And I heard this voice speak so clearly. And it said this, it said, never associate what you do with who you are. Yeah, and wow. I just kind of bolt, uh, you know, I was, went from snoozing to, Oh my gosh, God just, God just spoke to me. This, yeah. this loud, audible, booming voice just spoke to me. Mm. And you know, just on that actual, what God actually said, never associate what you do with who you are. You know, back then, I actually thought what he was saying to me was he's saying, you know, don't think you're some big shot just because, you know, you're in ministry or you're a pastor or you have a title or something like that. You know, don't associate who you are with what you do. Don't think that you're really awesome just because of your job. I thought that's what he was saying to me, you know, but as I've gone on this journey, with the Lord and I've come to know him better and better, yeah. I actually realized that what he meant was actually the opposite of that. You know, what he was saying to me is that you are a son of God. Ben, you are a son of God and what you do does not change that. And I want to tell you that today because this is, if, if God spoke to me audibly one time, it was important and I want to release it to you yeah. right now. Don't Amen. associate what you do with who you are. Who you are is that you are a son, you are a daughter of the most high God. There is no title that Come you on. could have that is higher than that. What title could you possibly have that's higher that's higher than, than son or daughter of God? I don't care if you're, you're the prince, princess, king of England, queen of England, whatever. There's no title that you can have that is above being a son or daughter of the most high God. And it doesn't matter what your job is. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in life. Yeah. Who you are is not associated with what you do. Wow. Oh, you know, Jesus. God is so kind. And so when I realized that revelation, yeah. it changed something on the inside of me. Yeah. And this is what the voice of God, this is what when God speaks to us, it changes, it brings a shift, yeah. it brings revelation and it's changed me. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I just want you to hear this again because it's so important. Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice. It is easy to hear the voice of God. And I want to release all stress off you and anxiety that you can't hear God and release you. In fact, some of you might need to say right now, I can hear the voice of God. Say that with me right now. I can hear the voice of God. Now, God knows how to speak to you. He knows your heart language. Now, really quickly, just hear this. In Acts 2, when they'd been in the upper room and the fire, the uh, you know, first Pentecost is poured out. His spirit it is released. What's the first thing that happened? They walk out of the upper room and everyone in the crowd hears the voice of God. Here's the message in their own language. Read it in Acts 2. They hear the voice of God in their own language. What am I saying to you? God still knows how to speak your language. He knows how to speak to your heart. He knows how to speak exactly the right words in the right way that gets a message through to you. Be released into that. God is speaking to you in your heart language. It's easy. Welcome back, Pour It Out family. I can feel the Holy Spirit stirring such a, just a tenderness in our hearts that He's speaking a message to us today that He loves us and that He loves having conversations with us. Do you know that? Father God enjoys your company and He loves talking to you. Those of you who are parents in the natural or have people in your world when we love them, you love talking to them. Get a hold of that in your heart. God enjoys talking to you. And sometimes he talks to us about other people too, because he loves all his children. And so sometimes he'll give us a little nudge and say, hey, see that person over there? I love them. Speak to them. I remember just recently I was in a Target store and, you know, it was just a regular Target store and I was standing by the aisle where the wine is. I saw a young lady pick up a bottle of wine and it was called Prophecy. Well, something on my inside was kind of getting a nudge from the Holy Spirit. And I looked at this young lady and I just said, ah, prophecy. Have you ever had a prophecy before? And something was just stirring in my heart to ask her that bold question. And she looked at me and she said, no, I've never had a prophecy. 
And so I said, well, would you like to have one right now? So there we are standing in the middle of Target by the wine aisle with a young lady holding a bottle of wine called Prophecy. And I released a prophecy from what the father was saying to her. And so we're standing there, tears streaming down her face. To cut a long story short, she says to me, you know, I've always wanted, I always wanted to hear a, a word of God. Her father was a pastor and there'd been some stuff going on. And she's standing there just saying, wow. God spoke to me. God's going to nudge you and speak to you so that you can also release his heart over other people. Isn't he amazing? Yeah. You know, I, I love that story because I love the lengths that God will go to yeah. actually speak to us. You know, so when we're talking about hearing the voice of God, can I hear God? Yes, he will actually go to great lengths to speak to us. You know, he sent Jody that day into Target. He sent this, uh, this other young lady and they had this intersection meeting together and she just happens to pick up a bottle of wine called Prophecy and then Jody was able to actually speak to her and deliver what God was saying to her. It's so powerful. And God speaks our language. He does God speak knows, our language. God knows how to reach your heart and your family member's heart. You know, one of our favorite ways that God speaks is actually through repetition and through numbers. And, you know, it's crazy. We have a we have an article on our website uh, and it's it's all about numbers and what different numbers mean, because, you know, one of the ways that God does speak, like I've just said, is just through repetition. I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you, but this was many years back now. All of a sudden I started seeing one, two, three, four everywhere I went. Has this ever happened to you? For many, it's 11, 11, 3, 3, 3, whatever it is. And I started seeing 1, 2, 3, 4. I'd never heard about this happening to anybody. I had no idea, but I knew enough to say, hey, this is not a coincidence. It's happening at a ridiculous regularity. I know that God is speaking. And so I just begun to search it out. I just began to say, God, what are you saying? I asked some friends on Facebook. I did a couple of different things like that. I said, what do you think this might mean? You know, and then eventually it came through. It was that God was saying this, he's saying, I'm making it as easy as A, B, C, one, two, three, four. I am lining everything up for you. And this became like a, a kiss from heaven to us. It, it, there's a lot of crazy detail to the story. It happened over and over and over again. But if you know, you know. I, I remember just give you one quick example. I got on a flight. I'd been on a flight for about 40 minutes or so. I picked up my phone. What was the time? It was 12.34. Mm. I was like, ah, oh, this is just like this little kiss from heaven. You know, God's with us. He's going ahead of us. He's lining everything up. I, uh, I changed the time on the phone for where I was going. This was before phones would just reset themselves. And I was on like a five hour flight. I put my phone in the seat pocket, watched the whole movie. I thought, I wonder how long we've got to go. I pulled my phone out. Bang. It was now 1234 in the new time zone. That time I might have shed a wee man tear, just a little single masculine tear ran down, ran down my face because I knew God was speaking and he's with us. But you know what? We actually discovered that God is speaking like this to so many people. Um, Jody wrote an article and it's on our website. And all you've got to do is Google what does 1111 mean and pour it out. If you put that in Google, what does 1111 mean and pour it out, it will bring up the article with all these different numbers. The reason I'm telling you about that is because we get well over 20,000 thousand hits a month just on that one article. And most of those people are not even Christians. God is speaking to people. God wants to speak and he will use all kinds of means, all kinds of languages. God speaks our language and he wants to to talk to us. Yeah, God's eager to talk to us and he's eager to, to talk to us in any way that will get our attention. For some of us, it can be, you know, seeing a rainbow and suddenly, you know, God's speaking hope to your heart or it can be the same Bible verse that keeps jumping out at you and speaking to you and for others of you. And it's probably many of you right now, you keep seeing regular, repetitive numbers or other things that are happening in your life. God's just trying to get your attention and wake us up and say, I'm saying something to you, but I'm telling you, people all over the nations are seeing 1111 or 911 or 2222 or 444 or 333. And like Ben said, you can go and read that article and find out a little bit more. I want to be clear about something. We are not talking about numerology. And this is not a formula. It's just another way that God wants to get your attention. And there are many creative ways God will use to grab a hold of you and say, I am trying to get your attention. I'm saying something to you. And for us, 1111 started to mean one of the things that God was saying to us was John 1111. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake 
him up. And if you're watching this and you don't have a relationship with Jesus yourself and you're seeing 1111 all the time, I want to tell you something. God is speaking to your heart directly and he's saying, I'm awakening you to the truth of my existence. Cry out to me, call on my name, say, come and show me God if you're real. And I'm telling you, God's going to show up and he's going to show you that he is very real, that Jesus loves you and he's running hard after you and he's going to bring your destiny out of the grave and wake you up into the very purposes that God placed you on this earth for. Amen. Wow. Yeah, another one of the really common ones, like you already said, was, was 2222. Yeah. And we're just throwing these out there to give you an example, because it's not just numbers. Like Jody said, it, it, might be, it might be a rainbow at a particular time. And you know that this is just God speaking right now. Yeah. Like that time where we pulled up to In-N-Out and there was a rainbow right above In-N-Out. <laughs> we knew that God was wanting us to go in and, and have eat In-N-Out. You know, this is what it was all about. He's stretching. All, all, all <laughs> jokes aside, like 2222 has come for us to mean Isaiah 2222 or Isaiah 22, 22 for you Americans. God has given us the key of David and he will open doors that no man can shut and he will yeah. shut doors that no man can open. So sometimes when you're seeing 22, 22 all the time like this, God is just saying, hey, I am opening doors for you. I am yeah. opening doors for you. And then you can have this confidence, hey, walk through, step in, because we've got to respond. When God is yeah. speaking, we need to respond and begin to step into the things that he's calling us to do. And like seeing 33, 33 or 333, for us, it's come to mean, uh, you know, Jeremiah 33, 3, ask of me and I will answer. Take note. If you're seeing things like this, anything repetitively, take note of what's going on in your life in that moment. Because in that moment for us, when we kept seeing 33, 33, if you're waking up in the middle of the night and you're constantly seeing 33, 333, then one of the things God may be saying to you is ask me. Ask me for the answer. He has creative solutions, prophetic answers, downloads, revelation, the, the, the miracles from heaven to pour into your heart. So ask him. God is moving. And like we said, through all of this, God speaks your language. Let me just put you at ease. He wants to have a friendship with you, an even deeper friendship than you already have. And he will go to extreme lengths to make sure that you know that he wants to talk to you, that he knows how to talk to you, that it's easy to hear his voice and that it's easy to enter in and hear what God's saying to you in this season. And you know what? I want to say one other thing. For those of you who've been praying for family members for a long, long time, God knows how to speak their language. He knows how to get a message through to them, even if he wants to do it in an unusual way. Just pray that and bless it and say, God, awaken my family. I thank you that you're speaking to them. And I thank you that you're opening their ears to hear from you today. Wow. You know, there are so many ways that God speaks. And honestly, we could teach about this for, for hours, maybe even for a week long conference or something. So we're just wanting to throw these things out at you today to give you hope that, yes, you hear God's voice. You hear his voice. And sometimes we just need to tune ourselves in a little bit and actually realizing, yeah. you know, one of the one of the, I guess, more subtle ways that God speaks is actually his peace. You know, in, uh, in Colossians 3.15, it says this. It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Wow. And so sometimes we're praying about something. We're trying to make a decision. God, is this what you want me to do? And if going this way, there's peace in your heart about yeah. that, you can know that that is God speaking to you. Because if you want to go this way, oh, I've just got no peace. And I'm not talking about fear. Don't, don't, don't confuse a lack of peace and fear because sometimes there can actually be, I don't want to confuse you right now, but you know, we, we need to have that confidence that we love God, that God loves us and there's peace in a particular direction. But if there's no peace that way, don't go that way. Don't go that way. If it's that way and there's peace, go that way. And that's just one of the subtle ways that God can speak to us. Always be led in peace. Yeah. And you know, one of the, the greatest ways that God extends the way that uh, we hear his voice is by literally spending time with him. Take time, purpose time, time that we set apart deliberately to be in his presence and speak to him and enjoy his company and get to know him as you would a good book. Get to know the author of the greatest book, Jesus, Heavenly Father, 
holy God. He has words that he's wanting to speak into your life, even right now. He has words that he's going to release that are prophetic downloads of revelation and answers and solutions to the things that have been keeping you awake at night. And so even right now, we just say that he is dialing up our receivers right now to hear clearly and with clarity the words that are thundering out of heaven over your life. I say that Jesus knows you, that he's speaking to you, that we are going to hear him with great clarity and increased revelation and that he's moving in this hour to extend our friendship, that it's going to be with such ease that we have conversations and hear his voice. Wow. Wow. Come on. I just want to take, we've got like one minute left. Just let's just quickly just do this. Hmm. Let's just get quiet before him right now. And we just want to say this. This is how I would pray. If I'm waiting on God, say, God, I thank you that your word says that my sheep hear my voice. And I thank you that I hear your voice. I know you, you know me, you love me and I love you. And so I just ask you to speak right now. And I just take authority over every voice that's not yours. I silence it in the name of Jesus right now. Yeah. I thank you that you speak to me, God. And then you just wait. You just take a moment in his presence and just wait. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you for every person watching right now. God, I thank you that you know them, that you love them, God, and that you are speaking and you have a word for them today. I just want to tell you, God loves you so much. And we release that oil of his presence afresh over you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Pour it out, Lord. 